Chapter 55, Annabeth. After their fall into Tatawa, stepping 300 feet to, to the mansion of night should have felt quick. Instead, Annabeth's heart seemed to slow down. Between the beats, she had, she had ample to write her own ob, obituary. Annabeth Chase died age 17. Baboom! Assuming her birthday, July 12th, had passed while she was in Tataris. But, honest, but honestly, she had no idea. Baboom! Died of, ma- of massive injuries while leaping like an idiot into the abyss of chaos and splattering of the entrance, entr- entry hall floor of Nyx's mansion. Baboom! Survived by her father, stepmother and two stepbrothers who barely knew her. Baboom! In Lyo of Flowers, please send donations to Camp half assuming Gaia hasn't already destroyed it. Her feet hit solid floor. Pain shot up her legs, but she stumbled forward, forward and broke into a run, hauling Percy after her. Above them in the dark nights, and her children scuffled and yelled, I've got them! My, my foot! Stop it! Annabeth kept running. She couldn't see anyway, so she closed her eyes. She used her other senses, um, other senses listening for the echo of, of, of open spaces, feeling the cross breezes against her face, sniffling for any scent of danger, smoke or poison, or the stench of demons. It was the first time she'd plunged through darkness. She imagined she was back in the tunnels under Rome, searching out the Athenoparthenus. In retrospect, her journey to Arakan's cave seemed to be like a trip to Disneyland. The squabbling sounds of nicely children got further away. That was good. Percy was still running at her side, holding her hand. Also good. In the distance ahead of them, Annabeth began to hear a throbbing sound like her own heartbeat echoing back. And played so powerfully, the, ro- the floor vibrated underfoot. The sound filled her with dread, so she figured it might be the right way to go. She ran towards it. The beat got louder. She smelled smoke and heard the flicking of, flickering of torches on, e- on either side. She guessed there would be light, but a crawly sensation across her neck warned her it would be a mistake to, mistake to open her eyes. Don't look, she told Percy. Wasn't planning on it, he said. You feel that, right? We're still in the mansion of the night. I do not want to see it. Smart boy, Annabeth thought. She used to tease Percy for being dumb, but in truth, his instincts were usually right on target. Whatever horrors lay in the mansion of night, they weren't meat. They weren't meant for mortal eyes. Seeing them would be worse than stand staring at the face of Medusa. Better to run in darkness. The throbbing got louder still, sending vibrations straight up Annabeth's spine. It felt like someone was knocking. It felt like someone was knocking on the on the bottom of the world, demanding to be let in. She sm- she sensed the walls opening up on either side of them. The air smelled fresher, or at least not quite as sulfurous. There was another sound too, closer than the deep pulsing. The sound of flowing water. Annabeth's heart raced. She knew the exit was close. If they could make it out of the mansion of night, maybe they could leave the dark brood of demons behind. She began to run faster, which would have let her, led her to her death if per- Percy hadn't stopped her. Stopped her. Chapter 56. Annabeth. Annabeth! Percy pulled her back, back just as her foot hit the edge of the edge of a, of a drop. She almost pitched forward into a whole new what? A, into who knew what? But Percy grabbed her and grabbed her in his arms, and wrapped her in his in her arm in his arms. It's okay, he promised. She pressed pressed her face into his shirt and kept his her eyes closed tight. She was trembling, but not just f- but not just from fear. 
Percy's embrace was so warm and comforting she wanted to stay there forever, safe and protected, but that wasn't reality. She couldn't afford to relax. She couldn't lean on Percy any more than she had to. He needed her too. Thanks. She gently distangled her, herself from his arms. Can you tell what's can you tell what's in front of us? Water, he said. I'm still not looking. I don't think it's safe yet. Agreed. I can sense a river, or maybe it's a moat. It's blocking our path, flowing left to right through a channel cut in the rock. The opposite side is about 20 feet away. Annabeth mentally scolded herself. She'd heard the flowing water, but she had never considered she might be running headlong into it. Is there a bridge or... I don't think so, said Percy. There's something wrong, wrong with the water. Listen. And was concentrated. Within the roaring current, thousands of voices cried out, shrieking in, ang- in agony, pleading for mercy. Help! They groaned. It was an accident. The pain! <coughs> Their voices will make it stop. And they didn't need her eyes to imagine the river. A brainy, a black briny current filled with tortured souls. Souls being swept deeper and deeper into Tartarus. The river Acheron, she guessed, the fifth river of the underworld. I like the flag song better than this, Percy muttered. It's a river of pain, the ultimate punishment for the souls of damned murderers, especially murderer, murderers, the river will. Yes, yeah, so you join us, another voice whispered. You are no better than we are. Anne's head was flooded with images of all the months she'd killed over the, year, the years. That wasn't murder, she protested. It was defending myself. The river changed course through her mind, showing her Zoe Nightshade, who had been slain on Mount Tam- Tamalapas Pace because she'd come to rescue Annabeth from the Titans. She saw Nico's sister. Bianca Dianglo, dying in the collapse of the metal giant Talos because she also had tried to save Annabeth. My, Mitchell, you and Silena Bjorgard, you had died in the Battle of Manhattan. You could have prevented it, the river told Annabeth. You should have seen a, you should have seen a better way. Most painful of all, Luke Castellan. Annabeth remembered Luke's blood on her dagger after he'd He'd sacrificed himself not to stop Cronus from from destroying Olympus. His blood is on your hands, the river wailed. There should have been another way. And Beth had re- wrestled with the same thoughts though, n- thought many times. She tra- she'd tried to convince herself Luke's death wasn't her fault. Luke had chosen his fate. Still, she didn't know if his soul had found peace in the Emerald or if he, he'd be born, or if he'd been washed into Tartarus because of his crimes. He may be one of the tortured, vo- tortured voices from past right now. You murdered him, the real cried. Jump in and share his punishment. Percy gripped her arm. Don't listen, but I know his, vo- his voice sounded as brutal as I They're telling me the same stuff. I think I think this moat must be the border of Knight's territory. If we get across, we should be okay. We'll have to jump, though. You said it was twenty feet. Yeah, you'll have to trust me, Percy. P- Percy, put your put your arms around my neck and hang on. How could you possibly dare? Cried a voice behind them. Kill the ungrateful tourists. The children of Knights had found them, and both wrapped her arms around Percy's neck. Go. With her eyes closed, she could only manage, managed. She could only guess how he managed it. Maybe he used the force of the river somehow. Maybe he was scared out of his mind and charged with it, uh, adrenaline. Plus, leaped with more strength than she would have thought. Possibly, poss- than she would have thought possible. They sailed through the air as the river churned and wailed below them, splashing Annabeth's bare ankles with striding brine. Then, clump! They were on solid ground again. You can open your eyes, Percy said, breathing hard. But you won't like what to, you what do you see? And Bissett blinked. 
out of the darkness of night. Even the dim red glow of the tower seemed blinding. Before they stretched a valley big enough to hold the sands, the San Francisco Bay, the booming noise came from the entire landscape, as if thunder was, echo- was were echoing from beneath the ground. Under poisonous crowd, clouds, the rolling terrain glistened, pu- glistened purple with dark red and blue scar lines. Scar lines. It looked like Annabeth fought down her revolu- rev- rev- revolution like a giant heart. The heart of the towers, Percy muttered. The centre of the, the centre of the valley was covered with a fine black fuzz, a peppery dots the, of peppery dots. They were so they were so far away. It took Annabeth a moment to realise she was looking at an army, thousands, maybe ten thousands of monsters gathered around a a central pinpoint of darkness. It was too far to see any de- details, but Annabeth had no doubt. Where the pinpoint was, even from the edge of her body, Annabeth could feel its power tugging at at her soul. The doors of death. Yeah, Percy's voice was was hoarse. He still had the pale waist complex complexion of a corpse, which meant he looked as uh, about as good as Annabeth felt. She realized she'd forgotten about. All about their pursuers. What happened to Nikes? She turned. Somehow they landed several hundred yards from the bank of Acheron, which flowed through a tunnel cut into black volcanic, volcan, volcanic hills. Beyond that was nothing but darkness. No sign of anyone coming. After them, apparently even the man- minions of night didn't like to cross Acheron. So I presume Acheron is the river. Yeah, yeah, whatever. She was about to ask per- Percy how he had jumped so far when she heard a skittering of a rock slide in the hills to their left. She drew her dragon bone sword. Percy raised, riptide, a patch of glowing white hair appeared over the ridge. Then a familiar grinning face was pur- face with purple silver eyes. Bob? Amber was so happy she actually jumped. Oh my gods! Friends! The titan lumbered towards them. The bristle of his broom had been burned off. His janitor's uniform was slashed with his new claw marks. But he looked delighted on his shoulder. On his shoulder, small Bob the kitten purred almost as loudly as the pulsing heart of ta- of Tataris. I found you! Bob gathered them both in, in a rib-crushing hug. You look like smoking dead people. That is good. Oh, Percy said. How did you get here? Through the mansion, through the mansion of night? No, no. Bob should, shook his head at Amp- Adamity Lee, that, that, ple- that place is too scary. Another way, only good for titans and such. Let me guess, Annabeth said. You went sideways. Bob scratched his chin, eventually at a loss of words. Hmm, no, more diagonal. Annabeth laughed. Here they were at the heart of Tartarus, facing an impossible army. She would take any comfort. He get. She was ridiculous. Glad to have Bob the ti- Bob the Titan with them again. She was ridiculously glad to have Bob the Titan with them again. She kissed the immortal nose, which made him blink. We stay together now? He asked. Yes, Anna agreed. Time to see if this death mist works. And if it doesn't, Percy stopped him. And if it doesn't, Percy stopped himself. There was no point in wondering about that. They were about to march into the middle of an, em- of an, an enemy army. If they if they were spotted, they were dead. Despite that, Annabeth managed to smile. The girl was in sight. Then a titan with a broom and a very loud kitten on the side. They had to count for something. Doors of death, she, sung, she said. Doors of death, she said. Here we come. Chapter.
Chapter 52 Jason Jason wasn't sure what, what to hope for, storm or fire, as he waited for, the de- for his daily audience with the Lord of the South Wind. He tried to decide which of the gods' personalities, Roman or Greek, was worse, but after five days in the palace, he was only certain about one thing. He and his crew were unlikely to get out of here alive. He leaned against the balcony rail. The air was so hot and dry, it sucked the moisture right out of his lungs. Over the last week, his skin had got darker. His hair had turned as white as corn silk. Whenever he glanced in the mirror, he was startled by a wild, empty empty look in his eyes, as if he'd gone blind, wandering the desert. A hundred feet below them, the bay let hung against a crescent of red sand beach. There was, they were somewhere on the northern coast of Africa. That's, that's as much as the wind spirits would tell him. The pallet itself stretched out on either side of him. A honeycomb of halls and tunnels, balconies, colonnades and canvas rooms carved into sandstone cliffs all designed for the wind to blow through and make as much as much noise as possible. The constant pipe awe and sound reminded Jason of the floating lair of a back in colored rado rado. Except here in the wind seemed in no hurry. Which was part of the problem. On their best days the southern venti were slow and lazy on their worst days, they were, they were gusty and angry. They'd in they they'd in t- in it in it yally welcome the Argo too, since any enemy a, any enemies enemy any enemy of Boris of Boris was a friend of the South Wind, but they seemed to have forgotten that the demigods were their quest. The Rendi had quickly lost interest in helping to repair their sh- the ship. The, the, their king's mood got got worse every day. Down at the dock, dock Jason's friends were working. De, Jason's friends were working on the Argo too. The main sail had been repaired. The wriggling replaced. Now they were mending the oars. Without Leo, none of them knew how to repair the more, more complicated parts of the ship, even with the help of buff or the table and Festus, who was now permanently active thanks to Piper's charm speak, and none of them understood that, but they kept trying. Hazel and Frank stood at the helm, at the helm, tinkering with, with, their, with the controls. Piper, Piper relayed, their, relayed their com- commands to Coach Hedge, who was hanging over the side of the ship, banging out dents in the oars. Hedge was well suited for banging on things. They didn't seem to be making much pro, pro to making much progress. But consider, considering what they'd been through, it was a miracle the ship was in one piece. Jason shivered when he thought about Kyone's attack. He'd been rendered helpless, frozen solid, not once but twice while Leo was blasted in the sky. Was it? In the sky. And Piper was forced to save them all single handedly. Dangle goes for Piper. She considered she she considered a failure for not have stopped for not having for not having stopped the wind bomb from ex, from exploding. But the truth was, she saved the entire crew from becoming ice sculptures in Quebec. She also managed to direct the 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 explosion of the icy sphere. So even though the, though the ship had been pushed away, pushed half half way across the Mediterranean. It had sustained. It has sustained the re- relatively minor damage. Down at the dog head, yelled, "Try it now!" Hazel and F- Frank pulled some la- levers. The port oars went crazy. It went crazy, chopping up and down and doing the wave. Coach Head tried to dodge, but one smacked him in the rear, rear and launched him into the air. 
He came down screaming and splashed into the, into the bay. Jason sighed. At this rate, they'll never be able to sail, even if the south of Venti allowed them to. Somewhere in the north, Reynar was flying towards Epirus, assuming she'd got his note at he, she'd got his note at Diocletian's palace. Leo was lost and in trouble. Percy and Annabeth were best case scenario. They were still alive, making their way to the doors of death. Jason couldn't let them down. Couldn't let them down. A rustling sound made him turn. Nigo de Anglo stood in the shadows, shadow of the nearest column. She'd shed. He'd shed his jacket. Now he just. Now he just wore his black T-shirt and black jeans. He swore at the scepter, and the, and the scepter of Diocletian hung on either side of his belt. Days in the hot sun hadn't tanned his skin. If anything, if anything, he looked paler. His dark hair fell over his eyes. His face was still gaunt. Jaunt. J G A U N T. Don't know what that means, but you can say jaunt. Gaunt. But he was definitely in a better shape when than when he'd left Croatia. He had re- regained enough weight not to not to start not to look starved. His arm was surprisingly taut with muscles, as if he'd spent the past week sword fighting. For all Jason knew, he'd been slipping off to practice raising spirits with Diocletian's scepter, then sparring, sparring with them. After their ep- ep- expedition in Split, nothing would surprise him. Any word from the king? Nico asked. Jason shook his day. Every day he calls for me later and later. We need to leave, Nico said. Soon. Jason had been having the same feeling, but hearing you know, Nico say it made him even edit edit dear. You sense something? Percy is close to close to the doors, Nico said. He'll need us if if he's going to make it through alive. Jason noted that, that noticed that he didn't mention Annabeth. He decided not to bring that up. Alright, Jason said, but we, if we can't repair the ship, I pro- I promise I'd lead you into the house of Hades, Hades, Nico said. One way or another, I will. You can't shadow travel with, with all of us, and it will take all, all of us to reach the doors of death. The orb at the end of Diocletian's scepter, scepter glowed purple. Over the past week, in it, it, over the past week, it seemed to have alienated itself to Nico, the Anglo's moods. Moods. Jason wasn't sure that was a good thing. Then you've got to convince the king of the South Wind to help. Nico's voice ce- ceased with anger. I didn't come all this way to suffer so many humiliations. Jason had made con- conscious effort not to reach for his sword. Whenever Nico got angry, all of Jason's instincts screamed, Danger! 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 Look, Nico, he said, I'm here if you want to talk about, you know, what happened in Croatia. I get how difficult, how difficult, you don't get anything. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to judge you, judge you. Nico's mouth twisted in a, in a sneer. Really? Really? That would be a first. I am the son of H- I am the I am the son of Hades, Jason. I might as well be covered in blood or sewage. The way people treat me, I don't belong anywhere. I'm not even from this century. But even that's not enough to set me apart. I've got to be to be dude. It's not like you've got a choice. It's just who you are. Just who I am. The balcony trembled. Just who I am. Just who I am. Just who I am. The balcony trembled. Patterns shifted in the stone floor, like bones coming to the surface. Easy for you to say. Oh, you're, you're everybody's golden boy, the son of Jupiter. The only person who's, who ever accepted me was Be- Be- Bianca. And she died. I didn't choose any of this. My father, my feelings. Jason tried to think of something to say. He wanted to be Nico's friend. 
friend, but he knew that was the only way to help. But Nico was making it easy. He raised his hand in submission. Yeah, okay, but Nico, you d you do choose how you t how to live your life. You want to trust somebody? Maybe take a risk that I'm really your friend and I'll accept you. It's better than hiding. The floor cracked between. The crevice hissed. The air around Nico shimmered with spectral light. Hiding? Nico's voice was deadly quiet. Jason's fingers itched to draw to draw his sword. He did plenty of scary demigods, but he was staring, starting to realize that Nico the Anglo, as pale and as gaunt and gaunt as look, might be more than he could handle. Nevertheless, he held Nico's gaze. Yes, hiding. You run away from both camps. You're so afraid. You get rejected. That that you won't even try. Maybe it's time you came out of the shadows. Just when the tension became unbearable, Nico dropped his eyes. The fissures closed in the balcony floor. The ghostly light faded. I'm going to honour my promise, Nico said. Not much louder than a whisper. I'll take you to Epirus. I'll help you close the doors of death. Then that's it. I'm leaving forever. Then that's it. I'm leaving. Forever. Behind them, the doors of the throne blasted open with a gust of scorching air. This disembodied voice said, Lord Alster will see you now. As much as he dreaded, dreaded this meeting, Jason felt relieved. At the moment, arguing with a crazy wind god seemed safer than befriending an angry, so angry son of Hades. He turned to tell Nyko goodbye, but Nyko had disappeared, melting back into the darkness.